So, you're interested in having your garage floor, outdoor patio, sidewalk, or any concrete surface coated, and you've narrowed it down to a polyurea and polyaspartic coating. Now, with any product, you've got your pros and your cons. Polyurea concrete coatings are extremely durable, they're impact resistant, and they're very long lasting. But we're not here to talk about all the benefits and great things about polyurea concrete coatings. You wanna know what potential problems you might run into when investing in this product. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Hi, I'm Rebecca with the Home Solutions Channel. Now, I wanted to learn what potential problems might come with polyurea and polyaspartic concrete coatings. So I sat down with Steve McNary from Southwest Exteriors to talk exactly about what problems might come with polyurea and polyaspartic coatings, if there's any solutions to these problems, and how to know if this type of coating is right for you. Let's go check it out. Thanks so much, Steve, for coming to sit down with me to talk about problems with polyurea and polyaspartic coatings. So let's just jump right in and talk about what are some of the potential problems that can come with a polyurea and polyaspartic coating? Yeah, so polyurea and polyaspartic coatings are great, but as you brought up, there can be some issues and some problems along the way. Um, most of them have to do with prep or installation process uh, more than the, the material itself or the concrete. So one of the biggest issues with a polyurea and polyaspartic is water is the biggest enemy. So if the moisture content in the concrete is too high, the product's not gonna bond to it, which is why you really need to have the right tools when you do that so you can actually read the moisture content of your concrete and find out whether it's a good time for you to do that or not. So how do you measure the moisture content? So there, there's some really cool tools out there. Um, they're not cheap, but they can actually, you can either drill into the concrete or you can lay this tool on top of the concrete and it, it will tell you what the moisture content of the concrete is. And then professional installers will know whether that product can be applied at that moisture level or not. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't do that, you risk the product peeling off later and not bonding well with the concrete. So polyurea is supposed to really go down in the roots of the concrete as opposed to sitting on top. If there's too much moisture, it'll just like sit on top of Correct, because it's actually, it's actually seeking out the moisture when it does that. And so if, it, if the concrete has too, mo too much moisture in it, you're right, it's not really gonna drive down into the concrete the way that it should. So let's talk a little bit more about some potential problems that can come if the polyurea mixture is not mixed properly. Mm -hmm. What can happen there? Yeah, so both a polyurea and a polyaspartic come in multiple parts and you have to know how to mix those two together. They have to be mixed in different ratios and they have to be mixed at different speeds. Uh, if you mix it at the wrong speed, it can create air bubbles in your final product and then as that is put on the floor, um, those air bubbles, sometimes you'll be okay and they'll off gas, but sometimes those bubbles get stuck in the coating and then you literally have air bubbles in your concrete coating on your floor, which no one would want. Right. Um, so speed is a, is a big issue when you're mixing those two chemicals together. And then the right ratio uh, is important as well. So some of the products will be a one to one ratio. Some of the products will be a two to one ratio. Uh, and if that's not mixed, it, it, it's pretty precise. It's not. See, when I bake, I just kind of throw stuff in there. When my wife bakes things, she measures everything perfectly every time. Right. Dealing with chemicals like this, you have to measure perfectly every time. Even if that ratio is off just a little bit, what can happen is the product's not gonna cure the way that it should. Now, are there any other potential problems you can think about with polyurea and polyaspartic coatings? Yeah, so not, just like epoxies, not all epoxies are created equal, not all polyureas and polyaspartics are created equal. And so you really have to do your research and know what the product is supposed to be used for. Uh, some will be UV stable, some won't. And what that means is if you don't do your research there and you're not using the right product, if you use a product that's not UV stable in an area where it's gonna receive a lot of UV rays, such as outdoor, it's gonna end up yellowing over time. Uh, it can also get brittle and crack as a result of that. So you really need to know uh, the proper uh, application areas and usage of the of the product before you put it down. Because uh, if you don't, it could be a great product. There's nothing wrong with the product, you just put it in the wrong place. Is there any way that a homeowner can avoid these foreseeable problems? Sure. Um, they can go and take certification classes, they can get trained on how to do this kind of stuff, they can spend thousands of dollars on moisture meters and hardness tests and everything else, or they can hire a good contractor. Because right. it's really about uh, preparation uh, and education and knowing what you're doing. 
So that's what I encourage folks uh, to really do. Uh, if they want to do a, a DIY project, that's fine. But if they really want to do it right, hire the right person. Um, make sure they're licensed, bonded, insured, but then also make sure that they've got the right certifications, that they've had the right training, uh, that the manufacturer has approved them to use that product. Because uh, if, if they show up and they don't know what they're doing, they're not going to do it any better than somebody trying to do it on their own. So it's really about the right prep, uh, the right installation and having the right tools to do the job right. And so you got to select the right person to do that. So after considering these potential problems with polyurea and polyaspartic coatings, when would you say this type of coating is the right fit for someone? A good high quality polyurea or polyaspartic product uh, is going to last a long time. Uh, it, it is difficult to install sometimes and you, you need to have the right equipment and you need to do it right. Um, but if if you're desiring to uh, do it as a long-term investment in your home or in your property to raise the value, to make sure the durability is there for years to come, maintenance-free for years to come, all of those things, then it's, then it's a great solution for you. And on the flip side, when would you say this type of coating is not the right solution for someone? Because of the difficulty of installation, because of the cost that can be associated with it, if you're just looking for a quick fix, then this is probably not the route that you wanna go. Uh, let's say you're looking to, you need to sell your, your home quickly and you just want to pretty the garage up a little bit or make that patio look a little bit nicer. Uh, you probably don't want to spend the time investing in a polyurea or polyaspartic coating or even a high-end epoxy coating on that floor. You're better off than going to one of the big box stores and using a DIY kit to do that. One other instance or a couple other instances where it may not be exactly the best application for somebody uh, would be if it's in an area that already contains a ton of moisture uh, in that it's going to be almost impossible to dry that concrete out enough in order to apply it properly. It's just going to be a headache for whoever's involved in that process. Sometimes that's a commercial application where for years that concrete has been constantly watered down the way it's been cleaned or uh, the way that water seeps into concrete from underneath. Um, and they may need to look for a different solution at that point because it can get really costly if you have to keep redoing things and trying things. Uh, and the moisture content can be causing that. And so you don't want to obviously you have to incur those costs if you don't have to. Thanks so much again, Steve, for taking the time to sit down with me today to talk about some of these potential problems with polyurea and polyaspartic coatings and what some of the solutions are. So hopefully homeowners out there know what to look for. Right, of course, it was fun. Thank you. <laughs> now that you know the potential problems that could come with a polyurea and polyaspartic concrete coating, you can make an informed decision on whether or not this type of coating is right for you. Now remember, the best way to avoid any of these potential problems is to find a high quality concrete coating contractor that knows what they're doing, is certified and trained in this type of coating. If you check the description below, you'll find a link to an article that outlines 10 qualities to look for in a concrete coating contractor. This way you can find the best high quality contractor for your project. Thanks for stopping by the Home Solutions channel where we just want you to have the look you love coming home to. Want more home solutions? Be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. We'd love to hear from you.